Typically, when I learn new and challenging songs on guitar, I'll find the music on YouTube and slow it down with the built-in speed manipulation tool. This is all very well for the experienced ear, but at a certain speed, the music becomes very... Yeah. Not to mention that there are often multiple instruments battling for the same frequencies, which can sometimes make it even harder to differentiate which notes belong to which instrument. So to combat these issues, I recommend a piece of software called RipX. RipX allows you to rip any piece of music apart into individual tracks and notes. What you see on screen is actually every single note that is played in the performance you're listening to right now. Now we can immediately see how powerful this tool can be, since once you import a piece of music, either MP3 or a video track like an MP4, which is what I have on screen here, it'll rip apart the track into individual instruments and we can select an individual track, solo that track to hear exactly what's going on. You can slow it down to whatever BPM you would like. And even better than that, we can even find a certain portion of notes and click each individual note to determine what that note actually is. So for example, check out this phrase. Let's explore the second half of that phrase. So there's a group of notes here. Sounds like we've got a pull off from a triad to another triad containing F sharp, B and D sharp. And if you can't hear that clearly enough, There the notes are. And then of course at the end we have this ascending phrase. And again, there they are. Now quite often I have students ask me how I go about arranging music. So let me show you another practical example of how you can use RipX to help with this process. In this example, I've just imported Slow Dancing in a Burning Room by John Mayer. And immediately check this out. This is a funny little side note. If I solo the voice track at the beginning of the song, this is the live in LA version. You can even solo the crowd and of course in a practical setting maybe you want to remove all that noise to help you hear the instruments better, right? Or you could take that crowd noise and put it over your own songs to pretend that you're playing a big show or something. Now in this example, I'm actually going to scooch forward here to the verse. I want to solo the voice, bass and drums, since these are the key elements of how I would arrange a piece of music. Now in practice, I would start with one instrument at a time. So I would begin with the melody, the vocals here. And if I select this portion of notes, it's not a silly little moment. we can very clearly hear what we need to translate to the guitar. And then once I've got this down, I'll then move on to the next instrument, so perhaps the bass here, and similarly. And then as we progress with this, you can slowly introduce the percussion, and then you have the tools and information that you need to be able to translate that to the guitar. It's not a silly little moment. It's not... Imagine you have a really awesome recording of you playing, but there's just a couple of offensive notes that kind of knock your confidence. It happens to all of us, and I go through many takes to demonstrate my best work, but I could save a lot of time in RipX by just deleting those offensive notes and replacing them with good notes. Check this out, for example. I have an old performance that I did a few years ago. It's an instrumental track on guitar. Now there's this particular section in this song where I thought it would be a good idea to squeeze three bends in such a short period of time. And it doesn't sound very good. It's on bar 22, so let's play from 17 so you can listen in context. So here are the notes. And RipX has already divided this into three notes. So I'm going to take the middle one here, delete that, bring this over, and bring the end over here. So again, if we play it in context from bar 21. 
much better. Now, I know that's not perfect, of course, but for a very quick example, you can see the potential here. If we investigate more of the tools on the right, or maybe we could even delete the note and replace it with another note from one of the neighboring bars, maybe that would sound a little bit better. But for a quick example, I don't think that's all too bad. Now let's go ahead and explore some more of these tools on the right. Now there are three main effects panels on the right here. We've got pitch manipulation, time manipulation, and level manipulation. Most of these effects are typically what you'd find in a digital audio workstation. Things like reverb, delay, quantizing the time, high pass filters, etc. These are really nice to have. But honestly, what's really impressive is the pitch manipulation tools. Being able to select individual notes and apply different phrasing effects like vibrato or slides post recording is something I've never seen before. Now I wouldn't personally use this but nonetheless it's nice to have and if you're looking for a bit of inspiration there are a bunch of preset effects down here as well that you can play with so for example if I grab a group of notes and then we'll choose one of these effects maybe this one here Repex also allows you to record audio this is cool because you can even see the notes as you play them with very little delay. But what's even cooler is that you can even replace those notes with samples inside Ripex. So take a listen to this example. Let's isolate the percussion. Now what I'm gonna do is take the kicks here. And if we navigate to this section on the right, there's some built-in kick samples we can take a listen to. Let's select this one here. Now I can set the mix of that. And then we'll do the same for the snare. So I'll grab these two notes here. And then if we listen to that group of notes all together, we have... Now there's a limited amount of built-in samples, but there's nothing stopping you from importing your own samples or even importing your own VST instruments. Now once you're done with all the editing, let's export. RIPs can be exported as MP3, WAV, even MIDI. You can either export the RIP as a whole as one track, or you can select individual regions, or even separate the stems so that you can then further process it in another DAW. I was skeptical of RIPEX at first because I wasn't convinced that it would stand out beyond some of the other similar software that I've already tried. But it didn't take long for me to see that RIPEX is truly in a league of its own. Now let me be clear, if you want a budget mobile solution for removing instruments from music, then RIPEX might not be convenient enough for you. But if you want a more insightful and hands-on experience with the music that you're learning or producing, then I can definitely recommend giving RIPEX a try. You can download RIPEX for free to trial for 21 days by clicking the link in the description. So go ahead and play, rip a bunch of your favorite tracks and have some fun. You've got nothing to lose. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.